I think it's relevant in the sense that there's there's always something you know people in that particular age group you know sort of their their sort of shared experiences and how they feel about the world i think there's a lot of lessons that people can sort of take away from that so um you know how they you know the choices they make and the things you know the way that they view things so yeah i think it's it's relevant i'm not sh- so sure that if you you use it as the this is the bible or this is how everybody is of that generation um because there's always going to be whether it's the hippies, you know, not everybody was a hippie from that generation or the beatniks. So there's, it's sort of a slice of what's happening. And I think it's relevant, but maybe for different reasons now. Hannah, what do you think? There's no one reaching for a cell phone here because there were none, right? Mm -hmm. Or they were about the size of a refrigerator. There's no internet in this book. Um, Does it seem dated to you? I think that some of the terms could have been updated and there's certainly some key sort of slang colloquialisms from our generation. Like, the fact that people integrate these kind of internet abbreviations into everyday life yeah. and, mm-hmm. um, you know, verbs like texting, verbs like Google it, these things yeah. could maybe have made it a bit more contemporary. But I think a lot of those ideas and the ideas behind some of those terms certainly come out in the ways that the characters interact with one another and the way that they interact with the world around them. But if, you know, some of the definitions had perhaps been updated to things about global warming or... Mm-hmm. Um, current world leaders, these types of things, I think it would still sort of stand the test uh, today. Although Copeland has updated, it's a different book, but he's updated the concept with Generation A, which is his latest right. novel. This is apparently his Web 2.0 novel. Okay. I think you probably see some of that uh, referencing yeah. in Generation A. Uh, going back to Generation X, Bob Osborne, dated or does it stand the test of time? As any book does, it becomes dated, but at the same time, I think he brings up uh, sort of cultural directions that we're traveling that are still relevant. The, the sort of what I would call the, the homogenization of, of culture, uh, the corporization of things and so forth, so that we are are losing some of the the texture of life, I guess. It, it's funny, we're talking about the encyclopedias, Wikipedias and so yeah. forth. I still have a 1955 Encyclopedia Britannica mm-hmm. that that uh, Dag is teasing Andy that he still goes so old to. fashioned, yeah. and I still do go to that. Even though I realize I have, I can go to Wikipedia too, but I still do because there's something wonderful about taking out this old book that has all this information on these, you know, sort of moth moth in pages and so yeah. forth. And you know, there's something very textural and so forth about books that I that I love, and uh, and yet. I would say the millennials, in a sense, they don't care about, it seems anyway, that they don't care about that kind of thing. And it, perhaps they're right. It, it's the ideas that are important. Hannah, is that fair? Well, it, about certain things. I mean, I think when we think about these new computer tablets, the thing that comes to mind is a Kindle, the idea that mm-hmm. you can just yes. read electronically. You never need to have a book in your hands ever again. I don't think it's that appealing to mm-hmm. people even my age. I think people are still very nostalgic, mm-hmm. even though they may not have ever had the experience of actually going to an Encyclopedia Britannica and flipping through those pages. I think people do know that there is some sort of nostalgic importance attached to books and having a shelf of books. And I don't have the sense that that's going to go anytime soon. But there are certainly other ways that we found to uh, transfer our information digitally. You know, MP3s, mm-hmm. nobody buys CDs anymore. And, you know, these things are all very quickly changing. I think there's, there is, too, this... Uh this idea that uh, a lot of things that, for instance, re- religion used to give us, this spiritual certainty about the world and how it works and where we're going and so forth, is disintegrating in the modern world. Mm-hmm. And so you have this existential view sort of coming into the fore, and it's like, how do you deal with the, with the feeling that life is not so much, well, you can t- call it meaningless, or you can call it miraculous. And it's like trying to trying to find where you fit on that. And I don't think that has ever changed. That defies the, generations. That yeah. defies all. That's, that's the I human think that's condition. that's the human condition. Yeah. And so in that way, it's a timeless book, I think, although it was written at a certain time, so we'll always be judged as well. You know what? I see nodding heads all around the table. I feel we've achieved generational <laughs> cohesion here. Oh, I love you all. <laughs> Peace and love, right, Bob? Peace and love, baby. <laughs>